Hello, assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. This is Ihsan. I pray that you are well and that this message finds you and your loved ones in the best of conditions. You know, um, there's there's an aspect of us that it's important to acknowledge, and not just in ourselves, but really in everybody that we interact with. And that is that we all have within ourselves um, this this child, this inner child. And it's often a, a wounded inner child that exists in every human being. No matter almost, I think, whoever you may be and how, you know, blessed an upbringing and childhood you may have had, at some level there's going to be some trauma that was inflicted on the soul at a young age. And then we tend to carry this throughout our lives and it ends up resulting in a lot of our behaviors and a lot of our problems come out as a result of this wounded inner child that exists in every human being. So I wanted to put this out to maybe just remind you that we all have a wounded inner child inside of us. You, as well as everybody you know, everybody you love, everybody you interact with, your spouse, your children, your coworkers, strangers, people you see on TV. We all have this inner child that's wounded, that's hurt, that has experienced fear and sadness, loss, anger, and it has, a, it has an important role on the way that they manifest and the way that we behave in the world. It results in a lot of the um, a lot of the conditions that we find ourselves in. A lot of times people operate really out of fear and out of anger and they don't realize that it's this wounded inner child and there's layers and layers and layers that have been accumulated on top of this to protect that inner child. Really what everyone is trying to do is to protect that inner child from being hurt again, from being hurt, from being abused, from being, um, you know, from being made to be afraid. And so we create these layers of personality and these neuroses and these complexes. It causes people to act out in strange ways in the world, um, to act out in, again, ways that are not the best, not healthy, not the most enlightened patterns. But again, these are all a result of this wounded inner child. And the point of this is that it's important to try to remember to the best that we can when we interact with others, when we see others, when we perceive others, that there is that wounded inner child that really is at the core of their behavior. And unless that is healed, and unless that's brought to conscious awareness, people will continue to act out these patterns that can often be self-destructive, that can be um, harmful to others, but really healing is what's necessary for every human being. And this is the actual purpose of faith and of religion, of spirituality, specifically of Islam. It's about healing. It's about wholeness. It's about returning to that state which Allah describes as a state that is salim, whole, healthy, sound. Again, back in that perfect state that, that one was created in. Uh, Allah Almighty says in the Quran that on that day to enter into paradise, nothing will avail a human being at that point except a sound heart, Qalbun Salim. And Salim, it, again, it means whole, healthy, complete, uh, and it's an indication of what Islam means. It's the same root word, Sin Lam Mim, that the word Islam comes from, as well as Salam. To have this, to be in this state, which is described as Salim in the Quran, it means to be healthy. In other words, Islam, it means to be healthy, it means to be whole, it means to be sound. And only by healing and becoming whole and sound do we enter into an experience of, of paradise. Right? That's what paradise is. It's a, it's a state of connectedness, a state of wholeness, a state of happiness and joy, which is your natural state, except when it's been lost as a result of you know, um, trauma in the world, our own actions, etc. So when dealing with others, it might be helpful to remember and to think of that wounded child inside of them that may cause them to act out in unconscious and harmful and destructive patterns and really selfish patterns. But just maybe try to remember that inside of every human being, no matter how young or old, there's a child, there's an inner child that really at the end of the day just wants to know that it's loved. And that's true for you as well. And it's important also to treat yourself with compassion and with love and with mercy, with forgiveness so that you can heal as well, so that your child can heal, the inner child inside of you as well. One of the most important and the best things we can do to support our own healing process is to have a dedicated, a disciplined, a daily 
meditative spiritual practice that's based in presence, in surrender, in letting go, in being still, and in just connecting with the divine presence of Allah, opening your heart and your soul to the light and to the energy that is flowing from the divine presence of God. In that moment of stillness, when it's just you and your Lord, deep in the night, to sit in stillness and to just be still, to just be present, to allow some of that tension to dissipate and to dissolve, to unravel some of those knots that tie us up, that hold us in this contracted state, in this state that blocks who we truly are, that keeps us from who we truly are. Um, spend a little bit of time, even just a few minutes a day at the minimum, to get started and just be alone with Allah and just surrender and just let go and just become still. And a lot of these neural connections and patterns and these neural connections that have formed over time and over a lifetime as a result of experiences through that meditative spiritual practice, through opening up and inviting in the light of God, the light of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the light of love, it begins to dissolve those neural connections and heal them. And inshallah ta'ala, bring us back into that state of fitra in which we were created. May Allah Almighty subhanahu wa ta'ala support you and bless you and uh, keep you upon that straight and balanced blessed path of healing and wholeness, the path that leads to our greatest potential and that guides us to what we are capable of as deputies of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, as divine deputies. Mercy, compassion, love, forgiveness, tolerance, patience. This is what it means to be a Muslim, to be a believer. Jazakallah khairun. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah.